Hey yogis and yogis, welcome to Yogana. My name is Anna, this is Eric, and today we're gonna to be focused on low back stretches. So go ahead and grab something comfy to wear, hop onto your mats, and we'll get started. All right guys, so let's go ahead and start in child's pose. So we'll bring the big toes together behind us. We'll keep the knees in kind of close together just because we are focusing on the low back. And then we'll sink the hips over the heels as we extend the arms. So as we settle in here, just noticing the breath fill all the way up in the belly as we inhale. And then as we exhale, just letting the breath circulate all the way down to the base of the belly. Just taking a couple rounds of breath here, settling in, feeling grounded on your mat. With every exhale, just let the hips sink a little bit deeper over the heels. No forcing. Just letting your body naturally get deeper into this posture, into your low back. And then on the next inhale, we're going to take the hands all the way over to the left side of the mat. So inching the fingertips over. Staying here, keeping those hips over the heels, hands side by side, or maybe stack that right hand on top of the left. Just get a little bit deeper into the right side body. If that's a little bit too much, just keep those hands side by side and those hips over the heels and breathe here. You might start to feel this stretch all the way down into the low back on the right side, just feeling that deep, big muscle in the low back. Or maybe just in the side body here, breathing into the torso, into the shoulder. Good, and then on the next inhale, we'll walk the hands all the way back through center over to the right side. So inching the fingertips all the way over to the edge on the right side. And then again, the option to keep the hand side by side or stack the left hand on top of the right. Settling back into this side. And then on the next inhale, unstack the hands. If they're stacked, walk the hands back through center. And then just take about two baby camel child's pose um, variations here. So we'll start to separate the knees a little bit wider than um, they were already. So taking them nice and wide, keep the big toes together. And then as we inhale, we'll walk the hands in towards the body all the way back behind us. Pressing into the tops of the fingers or the palms if the wrists will fall all the way down. And then we'll inhale as we press the hips high, lift them off of the heels. And then exhale as we find child's pose. And just do that one more time. So deep inhale, walk the hands in towards the body. All the way behind you. And then lift the hips off of the heels, roll the shoulders back. And exhale, bring it forward, this time coming into all fours. So coming into our first tabletop, we'll separate the big toes, keep the knees wide. The wrists are just underneath the shoulders. And then we'll just find some hip circles here. So if you wanna slightly tuck the toes, if that feels better on the ankles, you're welcome to. Or just kind of leave the um, feet, feet wherever they landed. Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and start to find those circles with the hips, so just stirring the pot, imagining your hips are like a big pot and you're just moving in one direction, 
to each corner of the mat. Really feeling those deep hip openers. And breathing as you move, maybe exhaling as you press the hips back. Inhaling as you come forward. Switching directions if you haven't already. Just balancing out both sides. Nice big circles. If you have any really tight areas or sticky areas, just you're welcome to rock back and forth and work out those spots. Good, and then the next time we come forward, we'll come back to all fours, neutral spine, tabletop, and then we'll tuck the toes. If they're not already tucked, we'll find our first down dog. So we'll slowly extend the knees, lift the hips, and then pedal out the dog. So drop one knee, bend the opposite, or extend the opposite, bend one knee, and then switch sides. So just alternating sides, pedaling out the dog, Releasing in the head as much as you can. No tension in the neck. Good. And then we'll evenly press both heels towards the mat. Keep the knees slightly softened so you're not overdoing it. And then we'll inhale, kick that right heel high. Stack the hips open and roll out the ankle. So just making circles with the ankle one direction, then the other. And then we'll lower down that right foot, switch sides. Inhale, kick the left heel high, stack the hips, and then roll out the ankle. Good. Lower down that left foot, find down dog, and then inhale, we're going to tippy toe slowly up to meet our hands, finding our way into a forward fold. We'll hang out here again, just feeling this inversion, softening the knees, keeping the head nice and heavy by shaking out the head, yes and no. Maybe grab opposite elbows. And then we'll release the elbows if you grabbed on. Inhales, you slowly ragdoll yourself up. Just feeling each vertebrae on the spine as you make your way into a standing posture. Rolling the shoulders down the spine, palms face forward. Good, and then we'll make our way back down. So we'll inhale, arms high. Exhale, find a flow. So dive it down, forward fold. Inhale, find a half lift, flat back. Exhale, lower back down the hands. Kick that right foot back, find a low lunge. Make sure that left knee isn't racing in front of the toes. Hang out here for a moment. So really drop that right hip down and forward. Keep the shoulders nice and low down the spine. Open with the heart. And then we'll plant both hands. Kick the left foot back to meet the right. Find a high plank. Lower down knees, chest, chin, or bent elbows. Hug the elbows in close. As we find cobra, we'll inhale, press your heart open, or lift the hips. Find up dog. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Inhale, kick the right heel high. Three-legged dog. Exhale, bring it up and all the way through. Find that low runner's lunge again. So dropping the shoulders down the spine, dropping that left hip down. And then inhale, we'll kick that left foot up to meet the right, forward fold. Both feet come to the front of the mat. Inhale, circle sweep the arms high all the way overhead. And then exhale, we'll dive it down again, forward fold. Inhale, find a half lift. Exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale, right foot goes back, find low lunge again. And then we'll move through some cat-cow lunges. 
So slightly drop that right knee as we open up in the, in the heart to roll the shoulders down. And then exhale, lift the hips, straighten through that left leg, round in the shoulders, in the spine. Inhale as we open and drop the hips low. Bend in that left knee. Exhale as we arch and find that cut. Lift the hips. And then move at your own pace here. So if one spot feels really good, you want to stay an extra couple breaths. Just take your pace here, your time. Just moving with your spine, your hips, like you're one big lung. Inhaling as you open. Exhale as you close. And the last time you find that cat pose again, rounding through the spine. We'll drop it as we find that low runner's lunge. And then inhale as we find a high lunge. So nice and grounded here, fix your gaze on something steady. And then we'll inhale the arms high, finding your balance. Sink the hips low, shoulders down the spine. Inhale, pull that left hand back, find that open arm twist, high lunge. Shoulders are in line here, really challenging your balance, keeping the hips low, that left knee in. Inhale, left hand goes down the back leg, right arm reaches back. And then inhale, find high lunge again. Both arms frame the face, hips aim forward. Exhale, warrior two. Open up the opposite direction. Drop that right heel 45 degrees. Arms are just over, or shoulders are just over the hips. So those arms are in line, not reaching too far forward or too far back. Left knee presses open. And then as we inhale, take it back, find peaceful warrior. Keep the hips nice and low and breathe into that space between the left hip and the left fingertips. Inhale as we find triangle pose, we'll bring it back up, straighten through the left knee, reach it forward and down as we stack the shoulders. Option here, keep the hands where they are or start to activate the core of the obliques as you reach that left hand forward, frame the face. Inhale, we'll start to bring ourselves back up to warrior two. So arms come out to a T, bend in that left knee, and then exhale, frame the left foot, find an easy twist here. We'll ground through the right hand, open up with the left arm, stack the shoulders. Good, lower down that left hand, or the left foot, frame the left foot, and then press it back. Moving through an optional flow, if you wanna press the hips right into down dog, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, find that chaturanga, up dog, and then make your way into a down dog. Good, from here, when you're ready, we'll make our way to the other side. So inhale, kick the right heel high, and exhale, bring it all the way through. Plant it between both hands. We'll move to that cat-cow lunge. So we'll drop that left knee slightly, open up in the heart as we inhale. Exhale as we lift the hips, straighten through the right leg. Roll the shoulders in. Inhale as we open. Exhale, close. And then again, just continue in your own pace, moving with your breath and your body.
responding to only your body and its needs. I'm just kind of here to give suggestions, but if anything at any point is a little too much, you need to find some stillness, find that place that feels really good, maybe child's pose or Shavasana. Go for it. We'll find one more round here. So inhales, we open. Last cat. Exhale as you close. And then we'll move back to that neutral runner's lunge posture. And then fix our gaze as we find our way into a high lunge. So we'll inhale, take the arms high, keep the hips low, shoulders down the spine. And exhale as we open up. Pull that right arm back, left arm reaches forward, shoulders are in line. Keep the hips low. Inhale, take the right arm back, reach towards that left leg and reach back with the left arm. Inhale as we find high lunge. Bring it back forward, both arms framing the face. Exhale, warrior two, drop the left heel. Bend into that right knee, press it open, arms come out to a T. Inhale, reverse warrior, left hand goes down the left leg, right arm reaches back. Keep that right knee bent. We'll find that rest in a moment in the thigh as we find triangle pose. We'll inhale, bring ourselves up. Straighten through that right leg and then reach it down. Stack the shoulders, press your shoulders against that imaginary wall behind you. Keep the gaze on the ground if you're having trouble staying steady or make your way up. Keep that right hand grounded or if you played around on the other side, start to reach it forward and frame the right ear with that right hand. Good, exhale, lower down the right hand. Inhale, close that left hand and then bend in the right knee, come onto those left toes. From here, we'll find our balance again. So ground through that right foot, fix our gaze on something that's not moving. Bring the palms together at prayer center. Stagger step that left foot in so that it's hovering and coming into a one-legged mountain pose. Left knee comes in and then we'll make our way into dancer pose. So starting to take that right arm high, left hand to the hip, bringing that left heel in towards the glute and then reach back and grab onto the foot with your left hand. Stay right here. If this is plenty enough of a challenge of balance, maybe grab onto a wall behind you, beside you, or start to lean it forward as you reach forward with that right hand. Press that left foot back into the left hand and keep that left hip in rotated towards the ground here. So keep that right knee slightly softened so that you're not overdoing it here. And then inhale, we'll bring ourselves back up. Keep that left foot high still, and then bring it forward, releasing the foot. Palms come together at prayer center, four-legged chair pose, or sorry, four-figure chair pose. We'll cross that left ankle over the right knee and sink the hips low. Press the left knee open, maybe taking your hand and physically pressing it open or just pressing down with that left knee. Option to keep the palms right where they are or start to reach it forward, activate the core or maybe reach it down. That really gets you into the low back but also challenges your balance. So just some options here reach forward, palms, or down. Whatever works for you. Just remembering, figuring it out for this side so that you're set up for the other side. 
Good. We'll start to make our way back up wherever you are. Lift the heart and then release that left leg. Shake it out. Find Tadasana. Whew. Good. We'll make our way to the other side. So we'll just stay in that Tadasana pose and then reach up with that left hand. Take your right arm out beside you. Ground through the left foot. Fix your gaze. Activate the core. And then we'll find that mountain pose for a moment. Bring that right knee forward. Hover here. And then kick it back. Bring that heel in towards the glute as you reach back and grab onto the foot. Stay right here. If it's a good quad stretch for you or start to reach it forward as you kick that right foot back. Keep that right hip in line facing the mat here. If you fall out of it, no worries. Just touch down, come right back into it. Maybe grab onto something nearby to hold you steady. You'll still be working those muscles and working on your balance either way. Inhale, we'll start to bring ourselves back up. Find that figure four chair pose. And then cross the right ankle over the left knee. Palms come together. Sink the hips low. Again, pressing that right knee open with your hand or just pressure of your knee. And then find whatever variation worked well on the other side. Reach it down, forward, maybe arms overhead. We're at prayer center. Good, starting to make your way back up very slowly, unwinding, and then lifting the heart. Releasing the hands, releasing that right leg, and shaking it out. Good. We'll make our way back down onto the mat. So we'll inhale, circle sweep the arms high. Exhale as we dive it down. Find a forward fold. Inhale, find a half lift, flat back. Exhale, lower down, find the loss in a squat. We'll heel toe the feet out really wide. And then keep, stay up on the toes, keep the heels lifted if that feels better, or drop the heels if that's accessible, and then drop the hips low. Option here, keep the hands lowered to ground you. Or start to bring the palms together as you press the knees open with your elbows and drop the shoulders down. Release in the low back. And then on the next exhale, we'll lower down the hands, lift the hips high, straighten through the knees. Inhale as you bring the toes in towards each other again. Exhale as you land. Inhale, find that half lift, flat back. And exhale, step or float back, find a high plank. And lower down, making your way into a down dog again. However you want to get there. Good. From here, we're going to go ahead and kick that right heel high, three-legged dog. Exhale, bring that knee up to meet the right elbow. So hover here nice and strong. Inhale, kick it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, cross the body this time. Right knee comes up to meet that left elbow, and then we'll kick it through. Broken triangle. Landing on the knife edge of the right foot. The inside of the left foot will reach the left arm high. Press that left hip high. Exhale, lower down the left hand. Kick that right foot back, three-legged dog. 
And then bring it forward, find a wide lunge, moving it into lizard pose. Plant the right foot on the outside of both hands. And then drop the left knee, untuck the toes. Good, we'll inhale. Inhale here as we open up in the heart, drop the shoulders. And then exhale, we're gonna settle in. So if that means staying up on the palms, maybe up on the fist, or if you have a couple blocks, and that's plenty, stay right here, or make your way down to the forearms, if that's accessible. Just making sure on the way down, that right knee doesn't wanna open up, only if the foot doesn't wanna open up. So if the foot's grounded, those toes and knees are gonna to need to stay in line so that that right knee is protected. So bringing that right knee in if the foot's grounded, or if the foot's opening up to the knife edge, go ahead and let the, the knee also open up. Just keeping those knees and those toes in track and keeping those shoulders as relaxed as they can be. So letting them fall down the spine, finding your breath here to hold you steady. And then we'll move into a little quad stretch again. So you're welcome to stay here if this is feeling really good or start to press yourself back up onto the palms as you bring that left quad in or that left heel in bending in the quad. And then you're welcome to stay here or next option, start to reach back with that left hand and grab onto the foot. Keep that right hand planted. Roll that left shoulder open. Feel that deep stretch as you pull the foot in close towards your body. And then slowly without flinging, releasing that left foot. Lower down that left hand. Tuck the toes, lift the knee, and then slowly unwind. Kick that right heel high. Whatever you need to do to counteract, if you wanna find wild thing or scorpion dog, or just make your way back into that four-legged down dog if those counter stretches are a little just really intense, too much. We'll make our way back to that down dog anyway. So just making your way there whenever you feel complete and feel balanced out. And then when you're ready, we'll find our other side. So inhale, kick that left heel high, and exhale, right knee comes in to meet that, I'm sorry, left knee comes in to meet that left elbow. Hover here. Inhale, kick it back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, cross the body, meet the right elbow, and then kick it through, find broken triangle. Inhale, lift that right arm high. Press the right hip high. And then exhale, lower down the right hand. Inhale, kick the left heel high. Exhale, wide lunge. Left foot comes to the outside of both hands. And then drop the right knee. Untuck the toes. And settle into lizard on this side. So again, if that means staying up on the palms, the fist, or maybe the forearms. As so we exhale, we'll settle in. And then keep that left knee and toes in track. Keep the shoulders relaxed, the muscles in the face soft, and make sure you're still breathing. Good, again, option to stay here or find that quad stretch. So pressing up onto the palms, bending in that right knee, bringing the heel in close to the glute and maybe reaching back, grabbing onto the foot with your right hands, rolling that right shoulder open. 
checking back in with the left knee, make sure it's in track. And then slowly releasing without flinging, lowering down that right hand, and then tuck the toes, lift the knee, unwind. Kick that left heel high, make your way into a four-legged dog, taking any transitional poses on your way there. Taking plenty of time here, but as you make your way back into that four-legged down dog, we'll go ahead and drop the knees down, find the kneeling posture. So walk the hands back, untuck the toes, heels sink over, or hips sink over the heels, and then we'll spin the legs forward, come into a half butterfly pose. So we'll bring that right heel in, extend the left leg, And then we'll inhale as we lengthen. Exhale as we square up the torso with the left leg and then walk the hands down. So keeping those shoulders down the spine, not worrying about where the hands land, just finding your edge here. And then keeping that left knee just slightly softened so that you're not, again, not overextending it here. But still making sure you can feel it in that left hamstring, maybe flexing the toes if that helps you get into the pose a little bit deeper, into your body a little bit deeper. And then stay right here or walk that right hand to the outside of the left leg and then inch the left fingertips over to the left a little bit more. That gets you a lot deeper into that big muscle in the lower right side of your back. So just noticing that area as you breathe here and hold. Good, and then we'll unwind here. So take the hands back to the outside of that left leg Inhales, we find stargazer pose. Walk the hands in, or walking the hands in. We'll take that right hand back behind us. Inhale as we fly the left arm high. Press into that right knee and lift the hips high. Good. Taking that left hand back towards the front of the mat as we lower down the hips and switch sides. So kick that right leg out, left knee comes in, or left heel comes in. We'll inhale as we lengthen again. Exhale, square up the torso with the right leg and walk the hands down. Relax the shoulders, maybe flex the right toes as you keep that right knee soft. And then again, option to walk both hands to the outer edge of the right leg, grabbing on to the outside of that right leg with your left hand, walking the right hand further to that side. Good. And then when you, whenever you feel balanced on this side, you're welcome to stay here as long as you need to, especially if that left side is a little bit more tight in your low back area. But as you feel ready, we'll walk the hands back to the outside of that right leg. And then inhale, walk your hands up. Take that left hand all the way behind you as you find the stargazer. We'll wind up that right arm as we lift the hips and press into the left knee. And then reach forward and lower down the hips. Good, we'll find windshield wipers with the knees. So take both hands behind you, plant both of the feet nice and wide, and then just let the knees fall side to side. So lots of options again here. 
keep those hands behind you or maybe challenge yourself bring the hands forward interlace the hands as the knees fall side to side activate the core a little bit more it's a little bit more work or last option here come on to the shins lifting up the hips as you let the knees fall side to side good wherever you're at you're getting that same opening in the hips this just works a little bit on that hip mobility since the hips and the low back are connected this really does get deep into the low back so just one more time to the right side and then we'll lower down bring the knees back through center hands behind you we'll make our way down to our back so heels come in about hips distance wide we'll reach forward activate the core as we inch ourselves down very slowly keep the feet planted nice and strong inhale find a deep morning stretch as you make your way down to the mat reaching behind you with your hands and pointing the toes forward with your feet good and then we'll inhale bring the knees in hug them into the chest lower down the feet and then we're going to cross the right knee over the left so finding that eagle twist lift the hips up and over to the right and then let the knees fall to the left that right arm is going to come out beside us here left hand is maybe going to grab onto that right knee if that feels good pushing you a little bit deeper into the stretch and then stay right here or find cat pulling its tail so if you want to play around with cat pulling its tail we're going to extend the right leg nice and long and then walk that left hand towards the right foot somewhere so if it can grab onto those big that big toe with your first two piece fingers that's kind of the direction we're headed in but if you can just grab you know the back of the knee or the shin or maybe the heel or something that works too or maybe if you have a strap or a shirt grabbing on wrapping that um, prop around the right foot can help and then with that left leg we're going to start to bend in the knee bring the heel in close to the glutes and then stay there or reach back and grab onto the foot with your right hand so this is kind of the direction we're headed in but if you can only bend in the left knee or just kind of extend the right leg you're in a perfect spot we're headed in that direction you'll get the same benefits same deep glute opener on the right side hamstring on the right side thigh on the left side lots of good stuff going on but again option to stay in that eagle twist if that's plenty we'll stay here for about two more breaths And then inhale we'll start to release in that left foot if you grabbed on bend in that right leg if you extended and then we'll all go ahead and bring the knees back through center reset the hips unwind that right leg plant the foot down hug the knees back in so just reset the spine rock and roll slightly massage out the spine roll out the ankles and then come to the other side we'll lower down the feet cross the left knee over the right lift the hips up and over to the left and let the knees fall to the right grab onto that left knee with your right hand left arm falls beside you left shoulder sinks into the mat Staying in that eagle twist if that feels good or play around with cat pulling its tail extending that left leg 
grabbing somewhere along the leg with your right hand and then maybe bending in that um, that right leg, pulling that heel in close to the body. So feeling that stretch in the left hamstring, that right quad, but ultimately in the torso, feeling that twist Last few breaths here, really letting that left shoulder feel really heavy. Imagining there's sandbags on that left hip and the left shoulder. So you're really un, you're really twisting here, really detoxing in the torso. Good. On the next inhale. We'll go ahead and release that right leg, re-extend it, and then bend in that left leg. Bring yourself back through center, find that eagle twist, and then unwind that left leg, reset the hips, find reclined cobbler's pose. Bottoms of the feet come together, knees come out wide, knees are nice and heavy, so you really feel that release in the sacrum. And then if this feels really, really good, you're welcome to stay here for the final moments of that resting pose, making sure you don't skip out on Shavasana. Just take your time offering yourself that final resting pose. It's such a treat. It's like the cherry on top of a yoga practice. So take as much time as you need, just finding a moment of stillness and letting your body absorb the practice. Namaste. If you enjoyed this video and feel great, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next flow.